Hi guys and thanks for watching again. As you can see I have two Raspberry Pi Zeros over here. A motion detector, sensor and just an LED. And this is the new Raspberry Pi Zero W. And the reason it's called a Zero W is because the W stands for wireless. And this is the normal Raspberry Pi Zero. And as you can see, they've made some changes to the to the board, uh, to this board. Uh, as we can see over here, there's a tiny mirror over there, and uh, it's not just a feature for the curls, but I just think that uh, thing is for the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And now, as we can see, there's a nice rounded line over there, which I think is the antenna for the Wi-Fi, and at the bottom. There's a text printed uses antenna technology license from ProEnt AB, and this one does not have that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that they kept the positions for the HDMI and USB plugs at the exact same position. They've only moved the main processor a little bit more to the left. But I like it because currently it's running from this power bank, and it has been running for two nights right now. And it's only drawn at uh, it's only drawn 27% of power out of it, so it's fairly well. Let's, uh, how, how do I how do you say that? It's it's very cheap in in energy use, so that is nice. And of course, I've already soldered the header pins on there, like I did with this one, uh, because yeah, in a moment I'm going to need these. So the, I like the fact that this is now just running a. Uh, as a host on my network, it has the uh, IP address uh, point turn 33, I believe, uh, and it's just functioning as a SSD host at the moment. So, which uh, means I can use it for anything, you know, a web server, anything. It's, it's this is awesome, and this is just a power source, and of course I can charge it at the same moment, which means this functions as a backup battery, as a UPS, uh, if we can call it like that, which can hold power for days, and that, that this is just awesome. So, currently, um, to, to connect it to my Wi-Fi network, I had to do just a simple thing, and that was use the tool uh, WPA underscore passphrase, then enter my network name, followed by the password uh, for my network, and then add the contents of that the output of that tool to the WPA underscore suppliant supplicant.conf file, which is located in slash etc slash WPA underscore supplicant slash and then the file name WPA underscore supplicant.conf. So that was all. Um, restarting the network or using if down if up uh, did not work just a reboot and it came up with an ip address so that's awesome it's it's fully standalone host right now so let me connect this um first now, now let's start with this motion detector uh, this is just a, a generally available motion detector from ebay very very cheap and uh, as you can see, we can use them for the Raspberry Pi or Arduino or anything. Um, but it is not solely made for the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero or Raspberry Pi in general, because these are two uh, potential meters which can where you can adjust the sensitivity and the time it takes for it to cool down or, or start back up again. So, unfortunately. These are not very handy in well using this device with Raspberry Pi, but we'll have to do uh, with it for now. It is a nice sensor, it and it works as you can see in a few moments. So I'm going to connect this to the Raspberry Pi. Now, what did I do? Uh, I believe I used the orange one for the five volt input and the brown one for the ground. Uh, yes, I should have used the colors better. So connect it. And then I believe I used this GPIO, oh, that's wrong, this GPIO port for the sensor pin. So now it has 5 volts and one output pin, which it uh, puts uh, high when it detects motion. And after a second or two, it just 
pulls the pin down again. And then it takes about roughly five seconds for it to cool down overall and start detecting motion again. Now, let me see, I've also made an LED, uh, just turned, uh, uh, added a 56 ohm resistor in between to pull down the voltage to about 2.2 volt for this red LED. Because a GPIO port uh, pin supplies 3.3 volts. So let's see, um, yeah. put it on here. I believe that is pin 8, if I'm not mistaken. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Uh, or do, am I doing it wrong right now? Yes, I am. So, there we go. Now, uh, let me see. Um, there's my keyboard over here, so... Let's see if I have my motion script here. I do. Um, now what I, what I did, I wrote a simple program. I will go over it in a few moments. Is uh, It detects motion. Uh, this LED turns on and of course, uh, and it, it keeps it on for five seconds, then turns it off again. And then it waits for this device to capture the motion again. Um, and of course, this LED can be used. Uh, you can use anything instead of this LED. It's a relay switchboard, which means you can turn on some uh, high voltage units or anything like that. So there we go. Now it is, uh, the script is, says it's ready because I uh, added a delay of about two seconds, but the sensor is not yet ready, but it takes a couple of seconds for it to detect motion. And as soon as I, it detects motion, it turns on this LED. So let's see, there we go. And then, like I said, the script holds the red LED for five seconds, turns it off, and now we have to wait a couple of seconds before the sensor starts accepting motion again, which is about now, I guess. There we go. So let me go over the script right now. So I'm going to switch to my computer screen. So here is the simple program I wrote. I wrote. Uh, first, we start with importing the two libraries. We are going to need time for some sleep and the Raspberry Pi GPIO library. Now, as you can see on my screen, uh, I'm, I'm connected with Putty to my Raspberry Pi Zero, which is currently at my desk. And like I said, it is running standalone via Wi-Fi, so this works perfectly. Now, this is the sensor pin. I've connected it to pin number seven, and this is the LED pin, which I've connected to pin number 16. And as always, I preferred the board mode instead of the BCM mode. So I literally connected it to pin seven and 16 and not some word conversion. So. First we're going to set up the sensor pin as an input pin and then we're going to set up the LED pin in this case as an output pin and then make sure that the LED pin is turned off. Now this is the function called later on, I'm going to uh, over this within a few moments. Like I said, I built in a sleep and print ready just to know that my script is ready. Then um, we're going to add a event which is uh, supplied by the GPIO library and there we tell, tell it to use the sensor pin which is in this case number seven tell it when it is rising that it should call back the motion motion detected function over here and the bounce time I've experimented with it uh, I, I was hoping to that the motion sensor would respond a little faster but it didn't so we can ac actually leave this and I'm going to remove it right now because it is necessary. So now, um, normally Python uh, at the end of the script it would just die. So uh, here we tell it to while one, so while true, pass, which just tells the script to run uh, infinitely. And uh, ac accept because we have uh, <laughs> written a try over here, and accept when the keyboard interrupt, which means uh, CTRL or Control C. Just print quit and clean up the GPIO library. Now, I didn't go over this one. Uh, like it accepts the sensor pin as an input and then just prints motion detected. Then it sets the output pin, the LED pin to true. And then like I said, wait five seconds and then 
turn it off again. So, like I said, you can use anything uh, for, for, for a uh, switch, uh, relay board, uh, anything, a motor or anything you want to drive as soon as the motion is detected. Or in this case, uh, you can also add a camera to the Raspberry Pi. And of course, I've used the Raspberry Pi Zero, but any Raspberry Pi will do fine with this script. And the Raspberry Pi 1, 2, 3, uh, doesn't really matter. Although uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, in the case of this add event detect over here, it isn't really uh, f yeah, energy efficient with, with the processor. Uh, it it's, uh, sucks up quite some, some CPU and the Raspberry Pi 3 is, is way more efficient uh, than the Raspberry Pi Zero. So you can uh, actually, you can also uh, in this loop, this while through loop over here, you can also uh, add some detection yourself uh, without this this event, of course, and then do anything. But I was hoping that this add event detect was a little faster, but it isn't. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the script for the motion sensor. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. But for now, thanks for watching.